cape Hey guys, how's it going? It's Matt from Fidelity Gaming TV and welcome to a Padres Insider here at the All-Star Break. On MLB 15 the show, Padres franchise, PS4. So, four days off of baseball. No actual games aside from the All-Star game and home run derby, but your Padres are 54 and 36, good enough to put them atop of the NL West. Good to see that they are just ahead of the Dodgers. Um, basically, this episode we're just going to be going through things, not showing you guys the actual home run derby and all star game. We will, of course, show you who is in it and what happens. But we're just going to be going through some simple things like award leaders, standings, um, just uh, batting average leaders, things like that, just leaders of lots of things and um, also a look inside and how your Padres players are doing. So, home run derby, Paul Goldschmidt, Adrian Beltre, Freddie Freeman, Miguel Cabrera, Justin Upton from your Padres, Jose Abreu, Andrew McCutcheon, Mike Trout, Yasiel Puig, and David Ortiz. So, your Padres were only represented there by Justin Upton. And as far as the All-Star game goes, we are going through all the lineups right now. It was Masanero Tanaka against Clayton Kershaw for the AL and NL. As far as All-Stars go, pitching-wise, it was Nick Vincent, the reliever for the Padres, Craig Kimbrell, the closer, and for the hitters, it was only Justin Upton. So even though your Padres are doing good, and quite frankly, a couple of their players are somewhat All-Star worthy, the only hitter was Justin Upton, and the only pitchers were Nick Vincent and Craig Kimbrell. So we were just going through the batting order and pitching and all that for both the American League and the National League. But I have to say, I am very impressed with how this Padres team is coming along. They are looking very good, like I said, atop of the NL West, which is good to see after their very notable, busy offseason. And um, I guess it's just good to see them finally becoming relevant in the MLB because if you watch baseball the last uh, five or so years they just have not been very good at all and have been almost the joke of the MLB so after the All-Star game concludes the NL successfully defeats the AL and will secure home field advantage for the World Series in this year of 2015 so here are the award leaders I sped it up for you guys so it doesn't take too long but uh Again, just going back to the Padres, yes, I am very, very happy with where we're at. I think that, uh, what are we at, 54 and 36? That's a very good number. Um, that's definitely, obviously, more than 10 games above 500. If we were at 10 games above 500, I would be very happy right now. But we are above that and almost 20 games above 500. And it's just really good to see. Um, making the trades we made, I think, helped us out a lot. Um, getting a very good leadoff man in Alcides Escobar. He just has played very well for us. You can see he is leading the league in at-bats, uh, National League in at-bats, with 359. Actually, sorry, that puts him at third, not first. So he is third in the National League with at-bats with 359. And that's what you want from your um, leadoff man is... Uh, to get on base and to get up at the plate as much as possible. So he is doing very good. Um, we haven't made too many other big trades um, within that trade. We did trade for Henry Owens and a potential pitching prospect earlier in the season. We will go over him in a sec as we do have a prospect update going over some of the prospects in the Padres farm system towards the end of the video. And you will just see now the awards now for the American League. Gold gloves. You see Mike Trout, Felix Hernandez, the usuals in the American League, tearing it up and in the front runnings for the awards. And uh, yeah, I guess the most surprising thing this year for the Padres for me is Jed Jerko. I was not expecting huge things from him, but I was expecting him to step up his game just a little bit. Uh, he's hitting under 200, and you'll see in a sec once we go over all the players towards the bottom of the lineup and I, I, I'm i just finding it hard to use him sometimes when we're playing in games. Sometimes I just kind of want to um, sit him out in the lineup and put in maybe uh, a DH instead of him uh, when we are in the American League obviously and I, I just I don't feel the need to play him as much as I thought I would. So as far as league leaders go we're going to go over here the notable stats. This is all in the National League. Matt Kemp is fourth in the National League with a 313 batting average 
He is sixth in the National League with 97 hits. Alcides Escobar, like I said, third in the National League with 359 at bats. Justin Upton, seventh in the National League with 16 homers. Also, sixth in the National League with a 510 slugging percentage. And as far as pitching goes, James Shields, three losses. That ties him with a bunch of great pitchers. Clayton Kershaw, Bartolo Colon, you'll see them. I think Matt Harvey too. Three losses, guys, through halfway through the season. That is ridiculous. So big game James is looking good. We haven't seen him in a while in a game, so hopefully we can get to see him soon. But he is tied for second in the NL with three losses. Um, the closer, Craig Kimbrell, is fifth in the National League with 25 saves. The only reason I don't think he has more is because the Padres are winning games sometimes by more than three, which isn't really a save opportunity. Also, I did forget to mention that along with big game James with three losses through halfway, uh, into the season. Ian Kennedy also has three losses, so he's kind of being overlooked um, by Big Game James, but he is also there tied with a lot of good pitchers as you saw, Kershaw, Cologne, all those guys with three losses. Good to see. Ties and Ross, though, I have to say, is our hidden gem in the rotation. 2.30 ERA, which is very good. Does put him seventh in the NL, but is very good. And a .96 whip. That puts him at first in the NL. That is ridiculous, guys. Tyson Ross even though he isn't the big name pitcher that everyone is talking about, he is definitely stepping up his game. And that's what the Padres need here down the stretch. You see here leading the NL in whips. So you see here all the records and um, ERAs with the pitchers. Uh, nothing too crazy. Obviously, Tyson Ross at number four in the rotation. He's caught on fire. He's raised a couple of overalls. Um, Corey Lupke brought him up after sending down Brennan Morrow. He's 4-0. Ian Kennedy, 9-3. It's just hard to figure out the right rotation um, between pitchers because sometimes you don't want to mess up that rotation when everybody's doing good. Um, I see Sean Kelly is 6-1 with a 1-3-8 ERA. Just good things all around here from this Padres team. Um, like I said, Ian Kennedy has a very good record. It's just hard to move him up because the rotation is doing so good. I think I'm just going to keep it how it is. I don't want to mess something up and just destroy this so far so good season for the Padres. So, And then lastly here in the bullpen, Craig Kimbrell. 2-1 with the 1-5-0 ERA, 25 saves, 39 strikeouts, and 5 batters walked. I'll see this Escobar, your leadoff man, hitting 273 with a homer. Good to see him getting on base. Will Myers, an A potential center fielder for us. You all know him. Only a 75 overall, though. He is young, and he is already doing very good. So hopefully he can boost up some overalls into the 80s soon because uh, his attributes are already good. Just imagine how good they will be soon. And once we get here to the 8-hole, Jed Jerko, um, not looking too good. 185, 9 homers. It's just not what I wanted him to do. And he's not really living up to the expectations. Like I said, they're not that high, but definitely not living up to him. We did bring up Austin Hedges, a catcher. He has not made an appearance yet because Derek Norris may need a rest here and there. Um, but he hasn't needed one yet. Um, yeah, we definitely need to put Austin Hedges in soon. I have not put him in yet. I just called him up a couple of weeks ago. And now for the prospect updates. Henry Owens in AAA has a 6-9 record with a 2.95 ERA through 19 games. Also, Casey Kelly, who is 3-1 in AAA with a 1.36 ERA, looking very good. He has boosted up to an A potential from a B potential at the beginning of the year. Only 24 years old. Taylor Lindsay, B potential second baseman hitting 261 so it's good to see that the Padres farm system is coming up because at the beginning of the season they weren't too um, I guess well thought of so that is good they're definitely moving up the ranks and those two pitchers at the beginning could crack the rotation or at least the lineup or the lineup the overall roster for the Padres in 2016 so that is going to do it for your Padres insider I hope you enjoyed gameplay next episode on Thursday coming at you San Diego Padres franchise against the Marlins like subscribe peace